Thank you so much, Doctor. And uh, another important aspect is the vaccinations. Uh, I know our viewers are very keen and farmers out there are very keen to know are there any particular vaccinations that are important, especially in the breeding season, that one may need to take care of or just in the life cycle of the sheep? Uh, basically, uh, there are key conditions that you need to take care of in sheep. And one of the, uh, uh, which is the most killer for small rams or small uh, sheep is actually called uh, Clostidium uh, Clostidium and the Rhizoxenia, which are caused by Clostidium perfringens. And basically, you want to do your vaccinations, even when the, 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 the lambing season is approaching, it's also good to cover the flock or the use with the, 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 the vaccine. Um, so we, 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 what we need to do is you need to have your, your, your youth vaccinated even before so that uh, that maternal antibodies is transferred to the, of course, the, the, the lambs when they are still in the, in, the, in the uterus. And it is also recommended that once the, the youth are, are born, after at least uh, four weeks, you need to do now the, the, the vaccination. Because it is assumed that the vaccination from the which was transferred from the from, from the from the from the ewe to the to the to the lamb is already uh, um, declined. There is no you, know, you need to have now the uh, to boost the immunity for for, for for the for the for the for the lambs. So you do it at least uh, for in four weeks time. And normally you can use the two vaccines in that category. You have a plain uh, uh, vaccine which, which covers for the Clostridium perfringens, and also we have a, a combined vaccine which also includes uh, Clostridium tetani. Basically, to, uh, take care of, of tetanus. You remember that when the rams, when you have the, the, the lambs, you need to also to do what is called docking. So docking, basically, you need, that is tail cutting. Sometimes it reduces bacteria called Clostridium uh, tetani, we can cause actually tetanus in infection in the lambs. So basically, if you combine that vaccination to have uh, Clostridium uh, tetani, it will be very good for the for the for the lambs. Yeah. Yeah, that that's quite important. Uh, and uh, just to share our own experience here at uh, Amago Doppers, how we approach the studio vaccine or vaccination program we start with the EU when she's in lamb meaning pregnant and at a period of uh, when she's about six to four weeks to lambing we vaccinate them that way just as uh, Dr. Chiriot has mentioned they are able to pass that immunity to the unborn and once the, the lamb has been born at month one we vaccinate and month two we give a booster and for the rest of the flock we normally uh, do it from a seasonal perspective where we do it just before or two months or a month and a half before the rain season that's when we do for the rest of the flock yeah and uh, the vaccine we, we use just to be uh, to offer some clarification for us we use the one that offers also covers the tetanus that and the brand of choice here for a while has been Java Close Tea. Yeah, so Dr. Tari, many a times I've been asked, and I'm sure you filled this question before, why vaccinate? You know? Uh, and also at the same time, why vaccinate? Some, some, some of the farmers would ask, why vaccinate every year? And what would be your advice? Okay, vaccination basically is a. Uh... Is, is called it is called an artificial immunity what you are tr trying to do is that uh, the, the either the virus or the bacteria which causes that disease it's um path pathogenicity or is is reduced so what you want to do is you have just uh, reminded the body that you have a bacteria or a virus that is actually uh, causing the, the disease but it is in a milder form whereby the body can now trigger an immune response to that virus or to that bacteria. For instance, if you have a, 
a Clostridium bavaringis, which has been, which is in the vaccine. The body would now launch an immunity, which responds to that uh, as if you have a, an, an, an active infection in that particular case. So what you are doing is that you are preparing the body to respond or to have a, an, antibodies that will actually fight the, the, the bacteria or the virus before the, the real infection comes in. And the reason why is that uh, if you have the, the body prepared to, have a, to fight an, a, an infection, the body will be able to eliminate and fight the infection, which is not going to overwhelm uh, the animal. In that particular case, if, if it overwhelms the animal, then you lose actually that particular animal and even uh, with, uh, living with, uh, with, the, with the lamb. So basically, you want to prepare the body to launch an immunity just before the active infection. And the reason why uh, you do now uh, a repeat uh, or an annual vaccination in that particular case is that when you feel the, the, the body actually with time, the, the immunity wins off. So what you want to do is you want to maintain that constant uh, antibodies in the system to, to be in the level that is required for the body to actively fight the, the, the infection. And I'll say there are so many uh, viral conditions that, or I'll name, mention like uh, the, the one caused by bacteria, like tetanus, prostidium uh, bafringis, which actually cause what is called endotoxemia. And in most cases, you lose a lot of uh, good animals if you don't take care of, of, that, uh, of that. Another condition which, which is very critical is called PPR. And it's also a very viral, is a, a contagious viral condition which can wipe the whole flock if you don't actually uh, vaccinate. So it is very important that you vaccinate. Another condition to take care of is called sheepox. Sheepox is very key, it's caused, it's caused by, by viruses and um, which affects actually the, the, the skin and you find the skin is quite damaged in that particular case. So you need to also uh, take care of, uh, of, 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 of sheepox, sheepox in this particular uh, in that particular case. So basically you have a, 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 a vaccine that, that uh, covers the viral uh, aspect and the bacterial aspect. Thank you, thank you, Doctor, for at least uh, clearing and covering on, uh, clarifying on that matter. So, what we've noted here at the farm is that it's very important to space out your vaccinations. Uh, you know, you, you, you should not be in the... You should be very careful how you, you space them out, meaning that you cannot vaccinate today your clostridial vaccine and today being a, a Tuesday then you vaccinate on Thursday uh, CCPP for example for pneumonia so because what you need to keep in mind is that even for the vaccine to work uh, it takes about 10 to 12 days for it to be assimilated into the body and for the antibodies to build up so it's important that even as you plan out your vaccination schedule you keep that in mind that you need to space it out yeah, for you to have the best and the desired results out of your vaccine uh, regimen. Yeah. Another vaccine that uh, I think is important to talk about, Dr. Curry, and this comes just from our experience here, is uh, for pneumonia, uh, what is generally known as double C, double P, CCPP. Uh, what we found out, it has played a very important role, especially during the cold months. We had been experiencing a lot of uh, coughing or respiratory distress uh, symptoms uh, from the flock. And uh, there has been a myth for long, and I call it a myth now. And we had fallen prey to that myth that you only give double C, double P to goats. Because that's what is, you know, out there, that's what people think, that double C, double P is for goats. And uh, we've lo uh, in, in the past, we, we had a few fatalities. But now, you know, since when we introduced uh, the vaccine and they scheduled it into our vaccination program, we've noted a tremendous change, you know. 
all the way from mortalities and also the general uh, hard health or clock health. And maybe that you could just add a bit more on the importance of, you know, uh, uh, spacing the vaccine and maybe, you know, a bit more on uh, any other vaccinations that one, especially we who keep sheep, should look out for. Uh, the, the, in terms of spacing for vaccination, the one the thing you need to know is that uh, the body actually lodges uh, elicit a response, and uh, it is good the body actually remember uh, does the response to a particular vaccines so that you can achieve the the best uh, immunity in that vaccine. So it is very good to not to overload the, the body uh, response mechanisms in terms of your vaccination. Doing one vaccine is the best in terms of you're able to get the best results in terms of uh, immunity to that particular uh, bacteria or, 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 or the virus. So basically 10 days to 12 days is, 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 is a good uh, length of periods to consider to, to have your, your vaccinations. And you can even do up to a, a month depending on, 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 on the schedule. Uh, in that particular situation, the other vaccine to look at in terms of uh, for ship in ship production uh, uh, system is flu tank, which is a viral condition. Uh, you you can have also ship hoof is one of the of the vaccines to to look at, and the particular one uh, um, banned from Amagot Dobas as said is the caprine for pneumonia. You remember that it is a contagious disease which actually affects the productivity of the of, of, of a flock because what you find that uh, the organ which is most affected is the lungs. So if you don't have a, a good functioning lungs then the animals will be compromised in terms of immunity. So doing the schedule for CPPP is very key for have, to have your healthy flock uh, for product for the best production. Thank you, Dr. Ari. And uh, when it comes to uh, matters management, what would be your recommendation uh, when one is setting up their farm? What should one look out for? Especially we've covered uh, the health side of it, the dewarming, the vaccinations. But now, you know, uh, there's always been a small discussion, I'll call it small, but about water intake. Does water play a critical role? Because, uh, you know, water for a while has become <laughs> uh, like gold. It's not easy to come by. Should one, uh, is there any importance of ensuring your sheep have clean, fresh water daily or can they do without for a few days what would be your recommendation thank you ben for that uh, um, clarification i would say when you are doing in terms of uh, uh, what is required by the animal uh, in terms of uh, feeding water is basically a critical uh, component to consider you have you can be having proteins you can be having carbohydrates you can be having vitamins but now, if you are left, if you leave water as one of the uh, uh, importance of, of, of uh, as important source of, of, of nutrition, then you are missing it out. Water is, should be actually the first one in the list. Remember, water is needed for the overall body functions. You require it in terms of for, for digestion. Right? You remember even for uh, right now, the animals are need, are taking a lot of. Uh, of roughage and fiber so in that particular case you require a lot of a lot of water you can have a ram like this one weighing almost 80 kilo you require between up to around 20 liters of, of water so basically if you calculate the amount of water you require in your flock of sheep then that you require a thousand of liters per day so water cannot be underestimated as one of the important factors to consider in any production system. Thank you, Dr. Ari. I think uh, 
we've all had it <laughs> today in terms of water and the importance of water it cannot be overstressed that water is life and indeed life is water so for the animals ensure that you have fresh water uh, available for them and most importantly enough sufficient water for them for maybe just to uh, not be laboring the point Dr. but in terms of uh, how much water would you advise per head let's let's talk about a sheep that average 50 kgs of weight how much liters of water <coughs> basically you require between 15 to 20 liters over okay. a, for a 50 kilo ram okay yeah okay yeah okay yeah. okay okay per day per day okay I think that's something even here at the Mago Doppers we need to yeah. <laughs> relook at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Asante Sana Daktari, uh, our viewers, I mean, today is a great day for us here to have Daktari with us to answer some of those burning questions we've had. Uh, I've tried my level best to remember some of the questions you've been asking uh, on the comment page. Please, if you have any more questions, Kindly just go to our comment page and just type out the questions that you'd like us to ask Daktari uh, or you need more clarifications on and we'll be able to provide that for you. Because our goal here at Amago Dopas is just to spread the good gospel of the Dopership and uh, to ensure that you're having nothing but happy farming. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Asante. Thank you. Asante Daktari. Asante. Thank you.